Greetings and salutations, all you players out there in FAF land. This is my second entry in the tutorial series. It is a 1v1 of uh, General Oxford versus Pew Pew on the map Twin Rivers. A greatly loved and often played ladder match and one versus one match twin rivers is a difficult one to master because it is split up the center with a ton of room for run buys you have two islands to fight for control over you do have the option of building cruisers or some form of navy if you so choose although in a one versus one i would tend to think that would be suicidal and there is a lot of land to grab a hold of uh, it is difficult to handle control of it this is definitely a spam map you're not going to see well you may see them, but you should not use um, point defense much. All right, this was sent in by General Oxford, so I am going to zip down to his point of view and do a commentary on his play. Um, initial build is going to be first land, followed by PGENs, then mass extractors here. And a land scout running off to the side. All right, one thing I would encourage is raiding. On this map, raiding is ridiculously effective. I would build probably two flares and two scouts, flare scout, flare scout, before I even built an engineer. Um, and send those up, one running right along the edge up here possibly even sit and wait in the back corner but what I would do is I would run past this and then around and up into this back area here and try to snipe off the engineer and then the second flare and scout go up this side and around here try to nab the engineer getting these two mass extractors and then around here that also gives you something to defend with if the opposing player is doing the same thing a uh, wise choice to move your ACU to the right hand side that does help you lock down map control but right now what I'm seeing is a lot of power spam floating positive mass running off of one land factory and not building air um, not building air is a mistake you need to get that air factory up a lot of people go second air on this map and it is pretty dang effective there are a few that go first air to get that bomber out early instead of raids that can be effective although I would not try it at this level of play the latest I would go for air honestly is third but people may differ on that it is possible to pull land builds but I would not say that it is the wisest thing on earth to do hero spirit going after this engineer but I doubt that he will make much of a dent before that engineer yep picks him up right there alright what I'm seeing here is you have basically zero intel uh, as to what your opponent is doing you are doing a decent job of attempting reclaim but since you're not using your mass in the first place of course the mass is not getting sucked up um you need to be using adjacency it is wiser to build uh you could go drop your land factory go one two three power generators mass extractor and then one two three probably four i think i would do seven p gens on this map uh before i went air unless you're really good at manual reclaim on the trees but there aren't really clumps well there are but they're not as easily reclaimed on as on some maps um, I would do seven power generators and then an air factory right here that would be your best choice and that way you get adjacency from all seven power generators on your air factory and that greatly reduces your initial cost you're able to get the air out much faster so right now, Pew Pew got to air far quicker than you did. And you're not really pressing an advantage here. Although, nice touch getting out the bomber. That is 
a good viable option and now we're going into the land factories another thing that I would point out is there is a very large pile of reclaim here a lot of it is labs there's not a ton of mass right here but these two chunks for the T2 wreck and this I think that's a rhino right there that is a very nice little chunk of mass and you can see he has already sent an engineer out to reclaim it so that is I'm gonna jump over here just for the sake of seeing the reclaim numbers that is going to be 803 to year 600 and he still has the engineer there to suck up more if he wishes all right you do not want to bomb Mexus. When you have a bomber, you have a very small window of time in which to use it before the interceptors get to you. You are picking up, you need to get tanks, get engineers preferably. Engineers are the most valuable target you can hit with a bomber. And then your other option would be to go after power generators, but the Aeon bomber is gonna be weak at that since it does have the lower damage. All right. You are Aeon, so we're about to see how good your kiting skills are, your versus UEF, which is going to be problematic. We saw some Lobo spam, but Lobos are not very good at knocking out Auroras, so there's not really anything to worry about there. You are not building enough engineers on the right-hand side, and you have too many engineers on the left-hand side, although you are doing a pretty good job of reclaiming. You have two mass extractors here, a mass extractor here, and a hydro, which is not being used. And then also need to see about getting the islands. At this point, pulling plus 10 mass consistently, your land factories are off. Um, you need to be setting those to loop and pushing forward. At this point of the game, more tanks is better than more tech. You can see he already has a tier 2 mass extractor. Uh, when you build mass extractors, that is less tanks that you have in the field. So a player going 100% tanks on T1 mass extractors will steamroll a player that is teching mass extractors and jumping... Well, that's probably not tier 2. It's probably just hasn't been... The finished factory hasn't been scouted yet. No? No, that has to be tier 2. Anyway, when your opponent is doing too much teching you have the very good opportunity to just run over him with your superior number of tanks before he can get his production back up to where you are. Alright, no upgrades on your commander as of yet pushing forward. You do have a blip up here. Nice placement of your radar. Lonely engineer, it would be wise to pull that back. Yes, you're doing it. Good job always nice to see a bit of observant play I would love to see some grabs at the islands I don't know that I shall though alright with auroras that is good you are bumping back and forth and keeping somewhat at range too close too close too close use the range all you can and you need to mix scouts with your auroras so that when you pass out of radar range I realize that right now you are in radar range and that is good and that is not good rushing in too close if you notice the range is significantly longer than your field of vision so if you do not have radar you cannot take full advantage of your range so you need scouts with your auroras and you need radar coverage in strategic locations which you do have here but again you should have some scouts for when you push forward I'm gonna bump over to see the reclaim numbers again that is you are doing far better than he is on reclaim that is always good to see but still have not reclaimed these there is a nice little patch of rocks up the side on both sides of this. We have reclaimed that side. There are two large boulders down here and other patches of rocks around each one of these. There's two large boulders in the back here. 
and you have snagged those. Anyway, you need to get engineers out to those locations because there is a substantial amount of mass in the early game in those large boulders. If you string an engineer out on an extended manual reclaim mission, it will go just loop like around here and you can suck up a few rocks here, move down, grab these two boulders across, grab this boulder and then manual reclaim order into the rest of the rocks. Same thing on the islands. That is another valuable thing about grabbing the islands because there are two more large rocks and a group of good reclaim over there. Tier 2 factory is up but he has opted for point defense. As I mentioned earlier, point defense is a bad idea because point defense cannot move and this is a wide open map. Alright, this is a problem here. You got sideswiped because as aforementioned you do not have scouts and your radar coverage ends there. Auroras are half health, long range. You have to use a range and when you get bulldozed like that as you will notice, almost all of the wrecks are yours, and he took nearly no losses because he was able to surprise you. This is going to be good kills right here, though, because taking out those T2 factories is going to hurt. He has built two HQs, oddly enough. Two for him to lose. Aeon artillery is frighteningly efficient killing those and you are about to overflow mass please don't do that that hurts my heart wasted mass is terrible oh you're gonna barely hang on there this is potential tanks up here uh, 2000 mass that is basically a t2 mass extractor upgrade that is a t2 factory upgrade although you already have your t2 factory so that is no biggie Actually, I am curious now how much one of these costs. Only 800. Nine hundred. Yeah, you have a ma enough mass in storage for two more mass extractor upgrades just off what you have in storage. Finally, though, you are going a bit negative. There is a trifecta in Supreme Commander. You have power, you have mass, and you have build power. When you can float all three in the mid-range and you don't have too much build power going unused, you have bullseyed your economy. And right now it's just a little bit too much floating mass. I, you have not overflowed yet, and I applaud that, but it just seems like there could be some good things happening with this 2000 mass that's sitting in storage going for an upgrade not sure which one it is but we will see you already have both guns it would be hilarious to see chrono dampener it's probably what that is minus 515 we could do a little sleuthing that is minus 1500 that is minus 1700 Okay, not sure. Alrighty. Whatever it is, it is forcing you into a power stall, and that is not good. You do have tier 2 land, but you have not yet built any tier 2 power. Each successive tier of power is more mass efficient. It takes less mass to produce more power as you go up through the tech levels. So what I would be what I would be advising at this point is to start building some tier 2 power generators before you attempt an upgrade like that because extended power stalls are terrible for your eco. Um, I would be building a tier 2 power generator and then as soon as that came online I would be building a second one in a different location covered by tack defense so that you do not lose it to a snipe in this kind of game situation and while I'm building the second one I would be reclaiming all of these power generators to gain mass to finish my second generator you would basically get it for free um, with that many p gens reclaiming the mass 
wise choice to pause your ACU, although you are dangerously exposed, my good sir. And T3 is on the field for Pew Pew. I do see a Titan scouted. Although there is a severe lack of intel over here. You do have a radar creeping up on the edge, and that is good, but you need some good scouting here. As to the power stalling, I'm sure a lot of you already know this, but just in case you don't, when you power stall, your mass extractors no longer function. So if you mass stall, you mass stall, but if you power stall, you power stall and lose potential mass income, which is not cool. And this is also not cool. We're seeing T3 point defense. I hate turtles so much. They are so sad and such a depressingly boring way to play, but unfortunately they win in a lot of matches this rank because the newer players, I, I, I mean no offense to anyone here, but a lot of times the lower ranking players do not realize how to counter a turtle. Although when you have T3 point defense with only a couple T2 to cover it, this is actually the best thing that you can do. Uh, if you can overwhelm the position with T1 artillery and T2 tanks that is a good way to go but the problem is ah that was all built with a T3 engineer if you kill the T3 engineer there is no longer the tech there to build that stuff all right good little push prime target would be the power he does not have RAS I think, I would think, yes, yes. Um, if you can kill the power, that kills his shields and kills his build production. I would not be focused firing the point defense because the Titans are going to kill all your units and you've basically done no damage because he can rebuild the point defense and you've lost. You could have killed both of these T2 powers and that would have been absolutely crippling. The shields won't work on his titans when he doesn't have enough power. So those are easy to kill. He can't build T3 point defense because those consume so much power to build. So he'd be out of those. And then basically everything shuts down while he rebuilds his power. And that buys you time. Um, this ACU upgrade was a drastic mistake. Up until that point, you were actually good and you could have recovered. But that... Pew Pew is actually doing a good thing at this point. Normally Titans are an incredibly weak unit that uh, fail miserably at everything they attempt, but when you're dealing with T1 and T2 spam, Titans do a fantastic job. As you just saw, a small group of Titans was able to completely demolish your entire army right there. And now we are going to see the downward swing. I am sorry, man, but that is not going to end well. All right, when you hit that point, I'm gonna point out a couple of things that are viable options. Number one being power sabotage. That is definitely something that you look at. Number two, air. You are Aeon. His ACU is completely exposed right there with zero anti-air. You have interceptors. He doesn't, and his only existing anti-air is a single flak turret all the way in the back. So at this point, you can literally kill him with a handful of mercies and win the game. Uh, you don't have a T2 air factory though, so that is a problem, and it is sitting idle. Air is a good way to deal with land when the other guy does not have interceptors, but you have to be careful with that, because if you're going to mercy the comp, you know, keep your mercies hidden. They do 2,400 damage, I think, or 23, something like that. So you add up real quick. It's like, well, I need about seven mercies, maybe. That'll give me one or two spares. Overkill is good when you're talking about an ACU.
Yeah. So I would build seven mercies over here to the side, and then all at once, giving him no chance to react, attack his ACU. Um, air is a temporary solution in the T3 uh, land stage because if you start using a lot of T1 bombers or gunships, all he's going to do is build some flak, and then that's totally useless. All right. So that was two options. Power sabotage and snipe ACU when he gets overconfident and exposed like this. You could have easily won the game that way. A third option. Back up. Let him have his little turtle and waste his mass building all this stuff up. And do one of two things. Either develop complete air superiority while turtling yourself so that you can destroy him at any point. That is option number one with that in mind this is backing off of the firebase number two go around the firebase there is nothing up here uh, you can go all the way through wipe out all this eco around the back wipe out all of this and leave him contained in his little five percent corner of the map once you have the total air control total map control you can reclaim a bunch of stuff and i mean you're sitting on top of a massive eco advantage so how can that possibly go wrong and then your third option is to leave the turtle alone until you have the capability to break the turtle. That means you already have a T3 land factory here. T3 mobile artillery is amazing. Um, if you would have backed off, you would have still had your massive group of T1 and T2 mixed together. You could have used that to protect yourself against the Titans because the Titans would have been moderately easy to kill once they were away from the base um, you would have been able to protect yourself with your existing spam push straight to t3 build five or six t3 mobile artillery and then shift the harbingers to protect them and then just calmly walk up to his turtle and obliterate it from range um, that is your third option considering backing off the turtle so uh, again, as aforementioned when I started this cast series, I really try not to be harsh because I understand that people don't have the game experience and they're looking to learn. So what I would hope that you take away from this is turtles work in low ranked games because players have panic attacks when they see the T3 point defense or the T2 artillery. And that is why turtles work. Um, mobile units and air are almost always stronger than turtles. Now, I'm not talking about 15 million mass invested 45 minute sentence turtles. Um, those can actually be fairly impenetrable. Um, I'm talking about 20 minute Twin Rivers turtles. You can almost always, 99% of the time, break a turtle like this with less mass than it took to build the turtle if you stay calm, back off of it, and then just objectively analyze the situation and determine the best way to do it. Which in this case I would have done it with air because again, hello, one single flak. Snipe his power and then proceed to demolish everything that he has with air. Um, so basically you just need to not panic and not act rashly because the T2 and T3 turtles are easy to beat at this stage. And then the other thing that I would say is if you get pushed into a situation like this, which sometimes you do, everybody messes up, it's it's no big deal. Um, what you need to do is, as you retreat, buy as much time as you can and look for a way to snipe his commander. Um, you could have easily won the game that way as well. Alrighty, that was a little bit longer cast than normal, but hopefully I talked through everything thoroughly, gave you some good ideas and pointers, and you'll take something away from this. Again, I mean no offense personally. Everybody needs to learn, including me, and I guarantee you, that if I went up against someone like Voodoo or Luzun at a 1v1, I would look abysmal. So keep that in mind. Everybody can learn from everybody. So uh, that is my pointer for you. And to everyone else besides General Oxford, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it as well. Till next time, that is all, folks.